Ooh, good morning everybody. It's uh, turning into a really nice morning, a little chilly. I get a lot of questions now about the fencing that we've got. So I thought I would do a really quick one because it's actually not very difficult to explain um, what it is and how it works and stuff. So let's chat chat about our fencing here. Uh, we currently have uh, posts that are, um, we don't dig them. We pounded them all in with a hydraulic machine for most of them. Some of them now though, we don't have that machine anymore. Uh, we put it in by hand, but we don't dig them. Some people do. I have learned some methods where you can get these things in the ground and then bury them. And then some people do concrete. Uh, there's a lot of theory on how fence posts go in the best, stay in the best, and so on and so forth. Um, the idea around pounding posts in is that uh, they move the ground uh, around them to tighten the ground to make the ground more dense and that in turn makes for a stronger post. <clears throat> so if you dig a hole you actually remove it all and it's no longer as dense as it could be which means it's not going to hold up as much. So. Um, there are a couple methods that you can actually pound the ground back in tight, but um, I don't believe concrete is the way to go, personally. But whatever, anyways, ours are pounded in. Uh, they're four to five inch in some cases, three to four inch in some cases. Um, with this particular fencing that we've got, it's called Baco um, fencing. Long line or something like that. It's got, it's got a, <clears throat> it has a name. Baco is B A Y C O. If you look it up, I think it's called Finish Line. That's what it is. Finish Line Horse Fencing or something. And it's a, what is referred to as a monofilament plastic. So kind of like the same stuff that's in um, fly fishing line kind of thing. And uh, the deal is, is that it stretches. You can stretch it. And it's a pretty cold day today. It's about minus five Celsius, which is kind of cold. And it goes right back. You see, it doesn't um, sound like uh, metal that stretches and then stays stretched sort of deal. And it's not a brittle plastic, so it doesn't snap or break or anything like that. In fact, each strand has somewhere between 750 and 1250 pound strength. I've heard different stories, so I, I go with the lowest, 750. But I think the website would say something like 1,250 pounds of strength. So you put five strands up. The bottom strand is 16 inches off the ground. The next ones are eight. Five strands. Five strands, you got 5,000 pounds of strength on them. I've, it is rare to see a horse snap one of these. If they get a front leg over and they pull and pull and pull, yeah, <clears throat> they can snap one, which is fine because there's still four more. The other thing um, is that because it's not metal, it doesn't cut them. I mean, we've had a few rope burns here, kind of idea, where it just takes sort of the hair off and uh, top layer of skin, but never has it ever cut a horse, ever, which is really nice. So, uh, insulation, as I was saying, there are five strands, it's recommended five strands. You could go higher. I will, wouldn't, I, you could go four as well. Um, and so they're put on like barbed wire or normal wire or page wire, uh, which I highly don't recommend, um, with, uh, the fact that the ends or the, the, the side, they're all put on on one side and they're put on with just these little, okay, let's go inside. See, that's another cool thing is if you don't make it super duper tight, which we don't need to, uh, you can stretch them a little and just climb in. Um, so they're put in with just staples. Come on camera. Focus. There we go. Just staples and you want to leave a little bit of space in there to allow the line to uh, move and sort of 
uh, you got to be able to stretch it later so I'll talk about that in a second but you don't want to put the staple in so it's hammered in tight you want this thing to actually move a little because it stretches and when it stretches it pulls from another spot kind of idea so if it binds on any of these um, staples then it'll be really tight somewhere and maybe loose in another so they're always a little bit loose it's got to be able to move a little um, and that's simply how it's done the ends are done by drilling a hole through as you can see here um, you drill a hole through your post come on camera there we go uh, you drill a hole through the post and you draw it through and then they sell these little bits here that it's it's like a one-way clamp so uh, it, it binds the the, uh, the wire inside there and uh, this goes into the wood it's about this long or so I don't know how to explain that a couple inches long and it goes in there but you put the line through first and then you pound that in and it's got screw holes to um, to screw them on I've never had a need to do that and uh, and then so this only pulls one way so when you pull it when you pull it it um, it gets stuck in there so you can't push it back so it's a one-way crimp clamping kind of deal um, and that's it so yeah. surprisingly easy to use to deal with if it does break you just replace one of the lines the cost is much much cheaper than wood it doesn't rot it doesn't get chewed on um, easy to maintain it doesn't really get dirty if it did you just probably wipe it with a cloth kind of thing it's easy to see through you know compared to to wooden fencing we don't have any wooden fence I don't know maybe in that corner you got if you've got a bunch of wood here it it obstructs the view we prefer oh, there's a lot of trucks on the road today we prefer the um, the look of this so and then um, uh, for the very end if you needed to if the horses weren't respecting the fencing okay just waited for the truck to go by here's a loud one big tires I guess um, if you if the horses really aren't respecting and they're leaning on it and pushing on it uh, the biggest problem that comes with that is that it actually stresses the fence posts and uh, you can have a bend or a push Lena rubs her butt on some of these posts sometimes depending on which one she's in the posts are leaning a little so you don't want that uh, so you want them to respect the fence and you can get just basic electrical you know hot wire um, once the horses get good you just turn it off you know it's it's a minimal cost item but you could try it out without it we did uh, till we had a couple of horses that just just leaned on this stuff it's crazy they had no reason to they just did or at least we didn't figure they had a reason to what's going on you two musical hay bags <laughs> and um, so we put the hot wire up and then that was that At one time uh, for the corners you want to consider the fact that um, you're taking the the line and you're bringing it on the outside so this corner post is going to want to draw in a lot so the extra bracing uh, it's recommended that you have your corner post and same with the gate posts up there that you have another supporting post four feet off and then I didn't really cut these right I guess uh, or get the distance right one or the other probably didn't get the distance just perfect um, but essentially you'll have a 45 degree supporting um, two by four for the uh, for the corners and the gates, so the gates will have the same deal. The gates will have the, same. the gate posts will be the same. See there. So, I put a cross post on the top as well because it helps uh, strengthen it a little bit more. And so those are the things you have to think about. And then from there, it's just uh, you know kind of refining it, um, figuring out how tight you can put it. Sometimes if your corner posts are in a, a weaker spot. Um, down in the far far paddock the corner post didn't have very good ground to go into it was too fresh 
Uh, so I've actually got some cargo straps going back behind the paddock to some trees to help uh, tension that post. I didn't need the spot anyway, so it worked out well. But um, with enough tension, with all five wires sort of pulling, you can really, especially the top wire, will have enough leverage to bring the post in. So you have to be careful of that. But other than that, it's a very economical, good looking, easy to install, easy to use. Comes on a big, huge spool of 2,500 feet or so. So you can get a lot done with one spool. And uh, it's good for the horses. They don't chew on it, they don't, they don't bother it, they don't break it. Hi buddy, what's going on? Yeah. This is macaroni for everybody that's new here. He's a quarter horse. I don't know where he wants to be scratched. Let's see. He's thinking. Is that it? Oh, he's starting to chew a little his food. No, oh, I have. Oh, his mouth is moving. Eh, he says, I don't know. He's not one for scratchings, really. Hello, Gracie. What can I help you with? Nothing right now? <laughs> you just want to come in and eat? Hi, big girl. What are you doing? I know. Go get him. You teach him a lesson. <laughs> they share pretty well. Anyhow, so that's my thing on fencing for everybody that's asked. Thanks for the question. It's a good one. <coughs> um, look it up. Baco Finish Line Fencing. Really, really good. Highly recommend it. I really recommend it a lot. Um, you know, no more worrying about screws sticking out and boards falling off, things getting chewed, wood rotting. There's piles of things. So. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching you guys and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>